let's start our lecture today our lecture is about the assignment that you have to do in the assignment first of all we will study about the scenario our scenario is that you have to suppose that you have appointed as a operational manager in a car company infinity a that named as infinity car and um, they have a small business and they want to expand their business like uh, currently they have two garage and their managers have registers to store their data they are manually recording their data they have no computerized system and only two uh, garage are there they want to extend their expand their business and they want to make the record as a computerized record so a part time employee suggested manager like a manager appointed and a new employee inside the organization or inside the car company and he suggested manager to store their records in computer so they can work more effectively and there will be a centralized data and everyone will access the same data and we can access the data 24 by 7 now manager is not well familiar about the computer so the person who gave the idea to the manager he or she have to explain all these things in detail to the manager so we have to record customers inside the computer we have to record these things whenever we are switching from registers towards the computer we have to record the customer details like um the number of the customer or the id card of the customer na uh, name of the customer sales stock appointments like how many stock is there for the sale and appointments who are coming in the next dates are in the next day and suppliers from where we are purchasing the cars or we are um selling the cars how many tax we have to pay for the car service logs etc we have to give all these details or record all these details inside the computer after maintaining a record inside the computer we have to make a system a networking system inside the company or inside the garage so the staff or the other members can access other centralized data 24 by 7 if they are not inside the garage then they can access that data by sitting at home and the manager can also access that data so using network staff will share the resources like if they want to print a receipt they will they can share the printers they can share the hard disk or they can share other things like scanners and other resources can be shared by using network we have to design an application that can be accessed on the mobile phones like in first step we are recording all the data that is available in the registers then we are moving towards the networking feature and in the last we have to develop a mobile app that can be accessed by customers as well as by the staff members and the managers now there are two activities in activity number 1 we have to explain all these points to the manager as i told you in the start the manager is not well familiar with the computer so the person who is giving the idea have to explain all these things to the manager so the manager may be uh, manager must be convinced that computerized systems are better than the manual systems so first thing is that we have to explain the different types of computers to the manager then we have to explain what is networking and what is networking and infrastructure and then we have to from the multiple types of the computer we have to choose one or two types of computer for the installation inside the infinity car infinity cars and then we have to explain like if we have chosen the super computer or we have to choose on the mini computers we have to explain the all components of these computers to the manager then we have to explain the peripheral devices and their functions to the managers so we are giving the details of the resources towards the manager in activity number 1 first thing is that we have to explain the types of the computer system as we have studied all these things in our uh, previous lectures so i will give the overview of these things the first type of computer is supercomputers 
that can be used whenever we want to do any si any type of research or we have to make a calculation like we have to calculate trillions of things or speedily we want to calculate millions of digits so whenever we have to make calculation or we have to res uh, make research we have to use the supercomputers so we can say that the supercomputers are not much relevant to our scenario but that is the type of the computer so we have to explain that type to the manager so whenever we are talking about the like supercomputers are the best computers according to the speed because the supercomputers have multiple uh, even the thousands um, processors inside um, their cpu are inside their case so the first name comes in the mind when we read supercomputers um, uh, then we need speed uh, the first name is supercomputers they are the biggest and the fastest computers so whenever we need speed we have to use the supercomputers but these computers are much expensive computers so only the government organizations or the larger companies can afford the supercomputers so military uh, and uh, government agencies are using the supercomputers not normal business organizations or different persons are not using supercomputers so <laughs> basically they are used in scientific and engineering application when we have to um, uh, do anything like weather forecasting scientific simulations or nuclear energy research the next one is mainframe computer when we have to make networking environment we have two types of computer in over range mainframe computer and mini computers both computers provide as, uh, as the networking feature mainframe computer are more powerful than the mini computers but mainframe computer are expensive so the companies that has the uh, users in uh, thousands they will prefer mainframe computers so they can support multiple programs simultaneously at the same time they can be allowed to do the multiple programs can be work at the same time all these features make the mainframe computer ideal for big organizations like banking telecom sectors etc which process a large volume of data in general so we have to kept in mind that mainframe computers are used when we have to facilitate thousands of users and we have a, a, a larger budget in our hands so when uh, then we have to prefer the mainframe computers now same mini computers also provide the networking environment but they can support hundreds of users at the same time so we can say that four to two hundred users can be supported by the mini computers so as the power is less as compared to mainframe computer as the size of computer is also less so we can say that the cost is also less of the mini computer so the uh, middle to small organizations can afford the mini computers and they will prefer the mini computer so mini computers used in the places like institutes or departments for different work like billing accounting inventory management etc it is smaller than the mainframe com uh, computer but larger in the comparison to the micro computers micro computers are the computers that we are using at our homes so mainframe computer and mini computers can be used in networking environment as a server now the next one are workstations workstation is designed for technical or scientific applications so as we know our concern is towards car uh, data man, uh, organization so that is not suitable for us or we can say that that is only used for technical or scientific application but when we are going towards the manufacturing we can prefer the workstations it consists of fast microprocessor with a large amount of ram and high speed graphic adapter like if we want to use any system for the advertisement we can prefer the workstations it is a single user computer so we can say that the workstation cannot be used as a server or as a networking in uh, cannot be used as a inside the networking environment it generally used to perform a specific uh, task with great accuracy then microcomputers that 90 percent of people are using the microcomputers that are also known as pcs are personal computers so we are well familiar with the 
PCs that has a microprocessor, memory input unit, output unit, and these can be used to maintain the record of a small organization. They can be used inside the offices. In uh, we can use the computers for making the assignments for watching the movie. So for our personal use, we can use the personal computers, and the different categories of personal computers are available like laptops, desktop. These are the categories of microcomputers. Multimedia computer system. Multimedia PCs are designed to present you with information in a variety of media. Media means text, graphics, voice, audio, video. Whenever we are working with any graphical image or with over audio or video data, we have to use the multimedia computer systems in which we are using the strong graphics and strong graphic cards so mentioned multimedia many people think of computer video games multimedia encyclopedia educational videos and multimedia home pages on the world wide web so whenever we have to deal with the graphics we have to use the multimedia computers multimedia system are widely used in business for training employees like whenever we are using any applications for the training like for pilot training or for other training we have to use the multimedia computers or we want to educate our customer make sale presentation and adding impact to other business presentation so whenever we are dealing with the images and the graphics we have to use multimedia computer system mid-range computer systems mid-range include the mini computer and high-end network servers we can use personal computers as a network server if that is uh, that has high speed and uh, we can say that the most powerful microcomputer can be used as a server or uh, these are the multi-user systems that can manage network of pcs and the terminals terminals are the points at which we are working or the different users are working mid-range computers serve as industrial process control and manufacturing plant computers and they still play a major role in computer added manufacturing like in factories whenever we want to assemble the phones assemble the cars or we have to make any manufacturing we have we can use the mid-range computers mid-range computers have become popular as powerful network servers to help manage large internet websites corporate intranets and extranets and client server networks so they are also much expensive so we can say that whenever we are Talking about the networking, we have three options, mainframe computers, mini computers and mid-range computers. And whenever we have to use the computer for managing the data, we can prefer the uh, multimedia computers like our data is in uh, graphics form. And if we have the data in the numbers form or in the text form, we can use the PCs, mainframe computers are PCs. So in our scenario, which computer will be suitable for us? In your opinion, which computer will be suitable? Can anyone tell? We have studied all the types of computer. So as I told you in the scenario, we have to expand our business that is related to the cars and we have to extend our business. So which computer system is better to keep the record of over infinity cars mid-range miss mid-range computers but these are the expensive computers okay you can be uh, you can use but when you are sitting inside the office we can prefer the personal computers as well so we have to use two types of computer whenever you are writing the assignment you have to mention two computers one for your networking environment and one for your record keeping okay the next one is components of computer as we know there are two types of components hardware components and the software in hardware components there are three units input unit output unit input unit consists of input devices output unit consists of output devices uh, the central processing unit consists of memory unit control unit and arithmetic and logic unit alu and the storage devices these are the four main hardware components now in the input unit as we know the input devices are included in the input unit we have to provide data by using the input unit we can provide data by using the keyboard by using the scanner by using mouse by using joystick multiple input devices are available whenever we have to put data inside the computer we have to use the input unit so input unit is responsible to take data from the user 
and convert that data into the language that can be understandable by the computer so input devices are responsible to take data and convert that data into form of zero and one then that data will be transferred to the cpu and the cpu will start the processing so that is the responsibility of input unit to convert our data into the understandable form of the computer as we discussed in start of the lectures the computer can only understand the zero and one language now after processing we have to show the results by using the output unit now output unit is responsible to display results in front of the user but as we know input unit converted the data in zero one form also the processing is also done in zero one form so the cpu will give that data towards the output devices and that is the responsibility of output devices to convert that zero one form into human language so the human can understand that results so input unit is also uh, input unit is converting the data into zero one and output unit is converting zero one into the understandable form of human in output unit you know, different output devices are used like we can use the printers we can use the monitors um, and we can use the plotters different type of output devices are also available for example when we visit an atm we enter over details like language pin amount to withdraw and then the final money which which the cash dispenser releases is over outcome so that is the output in this case the uh, cash dispenser acts as the output unit so that uh, device that is giving you the results these devices are output devices central processing unit also known as the cpu that is the brain of computer all the calculation is done inside the cpu there are three parts of cpu memory unit control unit and alu so all these three parts are doing their own work memory unit is used to hold the data control unit is used to give instructions which data is to be manipulated where to send the data from where we have to receive the data so all the instruction will be given by the control unit so all the operations are managed by control unit and all the calculation like addition subtraction multiplication and division comparison all these things are done in alu so that's why cpu is known as the brain of the computer so microprocessor helps in fetching the data and providing suitable results to the user. So by using input unit, we are giving data towards the CPU and then CPU after processing, give that data towards the output devices. So that is the central device in between the input unit and the output unit. So memory unit, when we enter data into the computer, we need to store the data. Like in our brain, we have also memory unit. Whenever we are reading something over memory is saving that data if that data is not available in our minds or in our uh, uh, memory cells of our mind we can't recall anything so same in case of computer we have to save over all data and files inside the computer or whenever we are processing something we have to keep that value like we are adding two plus two we have to store that instruction to add these numbers and we have to store two and two and the operation that must be performed on two and two so all these instruction must be kept in the memory so memory unit exists inside the cpu also outside the cpu so different type of memories are available but whenever we are talking about the component of cpu the memory is placed on the cpu because of the presence of some existing programming the memory unit transmits the data further to the other parts of the cpu like they can send that towards the alu or towards the control unit control unit as i told you that manages entire functionality of the computer the control unit collects the data entered using the input devices leads it on for the processing it only guiding the processor what to do on that data the control unit will decide either the data must be delivered to the alu to the mu or to the Clear. other devices so it can be said to the uh, that is the center of all processing action taking places inside the computer device basically the instruction taken interpretation of entered data issuing signals to execute the data and then finally retrieving the data is all done in the control unit alu 
all the arithmetic and logic operation will be performed inside the ALU. So we can say that the calculation will be done inside the ALU. Arithmetic means plus, minus, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And uh, logic unit means they will perform the comparison less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to. So these operations will be performed inside the ALU. Storage unit, like outside the CPU, we have to store our files to a permanent storage. So storage devices are used for that purpose. So that are also new, uh, you, uh, known as storage media, storage medium, storage devices, digital storage. So these are the hardware to store over data. So there are two types of storage devices, primary storage that includes RAM and ROM and the secondary storage that include hard disk, flash memory, CDs, etc. So they, uh, these are the uh, units of hardware in the software. Software means set of instructions that are used to work on the hardware. So there are two types of software, application software and the system software. System software, as we know, that are used to manage over system like uh, how to save a file, how to upload a file, how to use the memory, how to check either the memory is empty or not. So all the basic operations that are related to the system that are managed by the system software that runs in the background. So system software coordinates the activities and functions of the hardware and the software. So we can say that there is a system software lies between the hardware and the user. In addition, it controls the operations of the computer hardware and provides environment or platform for all other types of software to work in. Like over window is a example of system software. And if we have not installed the windows of operating system inside our system, we are unable to install any other software inside our computer. The operating system is the best example of system software. It manages all other computer programs. Other examples include firmwares, computer language translators, and system utilities. Like operating system, device drivers, firmwares, and utility programs like antivirus, compressors, uh, compressors of our files, Application software that are used by the end users. Like for over personal use, we have to uh, install the additional software inside the computer. These are the application softwares. Like we have to install the Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, web browsers, different other applications like CorelDRAW. These are the application software. An application can be self-contained or it can be a group of programs like Microsoft Office is a group of program in which different tools are available, MS Word, MS PowerPoint, MS Excel, Access, etc. Example of modern applications include Office Suite, graphic software, database, database management programs, web browsers, word processors, software development tools, image editors, and communication platforms. Examples of are the different variety of application software are these are the categories, word processor, database software, multimedia software, and web browsers. Now components, all the types of computers have different components. These are the major components that are included in all computers. In our lectures, uh, in previous lectures, I have mentioned all the components of our computer systems. So general components of computer systems is motherboard, and the main parts of motherboard like processor, sound card, graphic card, internal memory, secondary storage, external components. These are the internal components that are available inside the system unit and external components that are available outside the system unit that includes input devices, output devices and peripheral devices. Now we will discuss the internal components in internal components. We will discuss the secondary storage. The memory that is used to store over data permanently. That is additional memory inside our computer that is uh, also called auxiliary storage. It is non-volatile. That means permanent memory. If the voltage is not available inside the system, it will still maintain the record that is available inside the 
storage and is used to store data and programs for later retrieval. If we want to recall all the files or all the data, we have to save that data on the secondary storage. There are many kinds of secondary storage. Each have its own advantages and disadvantages, but the most commonly in each and every type of computer, we are using the hard disk for storage of over data. So hard drives that are used to store over data, that is example example of secondary storage that is also known as HDD uh, is the one kind of technology that stores the operating system application and data files such as documents, pictures and music that your computer uses. So over operating system is also stored on the hard drives. The rest of the components in your computer work together to show you the applications and files stored on your hard drive. So we have to, on the first part of our hard drive, we have to save over operating system and that operating system will tell us how we can use the other parts of our hard drive. Now internal memory, primary memory that includes RAM and ROM, the currently used program, whenever we are opening any program that must be transferred from hard disk to the RAM as the CPU can directly access the RAM. So we have to use two types of primary memory RAM and ROM. And also the cache that is also built by using the technology of ROM, uh, sorry RAM. So computer memory is basically primary memory and the secondary memory. So RAM is random access memory that is volatile memory that needs continuous voltage if the electric power is cut off, all the data available in the RAM will be erased. And ROM is used to store data permanently. All the routines that are related to the basic functions of input and output and to booting pro uh, and for the booting process that will be stored inside the ROM. These are the types of memory, RAM and ROM. In RAM, we have two types, SRAM and DRAM. And in ROM, we have three types, PROM, EPROM, and double EPROM. Each and every has uh, type ha has its own function. Random access memory, that is called read-write memory. So all the data that required by the CPU first loaded inside the RAM, and then we can access that data. It is a volatile memory, so when the electric power is cut off, the data will be erased. ROM read-only memory that stores the fundamental information that is essential to the operating system, like how we can start or restart our computer, how to display date and time on computer, how we can check either all the input devices are connected to our computer or not. It is not volatile, so we can say that ROM is non-volatile memory it always retains the data. So we can say that that is a permanent type of memory. Now the cache memory, that is a uh, smaller memory that lies in between the CPU and the RAM. So most frequently used instruction will be kept inside the cache memory. So that is made from using the technology of SRAM. So cache memory is a chip based computer component that makes retrieving data from the computer's memory more efficient as it is uh, much closer to the CPU. So accessing data from the cache memory will increase the efficiency of efficiency and speed of computer. Cache memory is sometimes called the CPU memory because it is physically integrated directly to the CPU chip or placed on the separate chip that has a separate bus interconnect with the CPU. So we can say that sometimes we have to place the cache memory on the CPU chip or we have to take a bus and connect that bus to the chip that is known as the cache memory. In order to be close to the processor, cache memory need to be much smaller than the main memory. So it is expensive, so that's why we are also using the uh, cache memory in smaller amount. Registers, these are the memory places pasted on or placed on the microchips. Uh, there are 32 or 64 registers on the microprocessor chip. Each register has its own work. The instruction that is currently being processed by the CPU that is kept inside the registers. So they are very quick and the fastest memory. The computer needs processor registers for manipulating data and a register for holding a memory address. Now processor, that is the main part to process data. A processor is a piece of hardware that interrupts the instructions that drive 
a computer the processor are the brains of the computer with good reason without a processor computers could not run programs all the calculation will be uh, done inside the processor that are also called the cpus processing unit take instructions from the computer's memory as i told you the direct communication is only with the cache and with the ram the cpu decodes uh, and process an action when an instruction is received then the cpu delivers an output motherboard that is the main platform on which all the devices are edged like vga cards graphics cards sound cards cpu over uh, ports all the components are edged on the motherboard and the electric current will be provided by the motherboard as we have placed the electronic circuits on the motherboard so motherboard is also called the circuit board or the logic board also called main board in the computer system the biggest component is the motherboard that controls all the components of computer system and establish a link between all the components all uh, as the motherboard is providing electricity to all the components so they are making the communication between the components from the motherboard different components like rom cpu ram slots usb port and other components are connected so that is the main main platform of our computer system cpu chip the central processing unit is the processor that controls all function of computer system the overall flow of task and functions are controlled by the central processing unit or cpu chip for computer system the central processing unit is called the brain of computer ram slots the RAM slot is a place where we can fix the RAM. So after fixing the RAM, it will provide the electric current towards the RAM chips. So in general computer system, there are mainly two RAM slots, but sometimes there can be four plus slots in the motherboard to increase the memory of the computer system. So we can place more than two chips inside the system. CMOS battery that provides the power towards the computer as we can say that the cells are providing power to over different electronic devices so CMOS battery is used for storing the BIOS setting on the motherboard as the when the electric power is cuts off the computer still uh, memorize the things that is because uh, the uh, motherboard has a CMOS battery placed on the motherboard the CMOS battery is also capable of storing the time and date in it power supply slot the power supply slot is used for providing the electric supply to the computer system so that is there is a place where the all the wires and the uh, that are providing the path of electricity towards all the components that are placed on the motherboard the total power supply given to the system is around one uh, 110 ac power in the power supply type connector there are a total of 20 pins by using that we can uh, uh, give the power to our computer systems graphic cards that are responsible to manage the graphics on our system like whenever we are talking about the videos or images image data uh, have to display on the computer screen that will be managed by the graphic card so that is a type of display adapter or video card installed within the most computing devices to display graphical data with high clarity color definition and overall appearance if the graphic card is uh, having high quality the uh, quality of over graphics displayed on screen is also high a graphic card provides high quality visual display by processing and executing graphical data using advanced graphical techniques features and functions a graphic card is known as graphic adapter graphic controller graphic accelerator card so the graphic card is responsible for graphics and the quality of our graphics now the next one is sound card that is responsible for the sound system so the sound card are internal hardware devices that plug into the motherboard so the components that we have studied that are also edged on the motherboard a sound uh, card main function is that it will allow computer system to produce sound as we know our sound is 
in analog form so in the sound card we have the circuit that convert over sound into digital form like in zero one form that computer can understand and uh, also that will transfer over sound towards the speakers and the speakers are also responsible to convert over um the data that is available in digital form into the sound pulses so the sound card is responsible to manage all the uh data that is related to the sound the sound card are also useful in conversion of analog data into digital and vice versa now the external components that are available outside the system unit in external component there are multiple input devices input devices are used to give the data towards the computer so whenever we want to interact with the computer we have to use the input device the output devices are used to give the data are display the results to the users like monitors projectors headphones speakers printers plotters peripheral devices the devices that are not related to the main processing so we can say that the pro uh, devices that are not included in processing process are the peripheral devices that can be input devices that can be output devices that can be the uh, sound card video card cd rom joystick scanner these are the peripheral devices so that is not uh, included with the main functionality like the processing of the system but that will be giving the extra function to the computer system so peripheral devices can be internal like sound card and can be external like joystick now we will discuss the network network when we are connecting to our more computers by using wires or by using the signals so in the network infrastructure we have to discuss the network infrastructure with our manager so network infrastructure is mixture of hardware devices and software de uh, that must be installed on our computers or on our server for the installation of our computer network so hardware infrastructure typically includes routers switches hubs repeaters gateways bridges and modems all these devices has their own purpose we have to choose one or two devices from them for installation of our hardware after the connectivity uh, by using these devices we have to install the software so the software infrastructure includes the monitoring and management tool like firewall and other tools are required like we have to install different type of operating system that support the networking infrastructure after the physical arrangement of our hardware we have to switch towards the software and then we have to use the network services like networking protocol like tcp ip and we have to understand how we are communicating with the user so these all are uh, these all topics are available in our lectures so we have to choose either we are using the router either we are using the switches hubs repeaters which type of hardware device we are using which type of software we have to install over computer and which type of network protocol we are following network infrastructure design can help you to plan how to implement monitor and manage an it network as after the maintenance of our record we have to install the network in the infinity card so we have to know that what is our hardware infrastructure what is our software infrastructure so we have to discuss all these components or we have to must uh, we have must idea about these components a design can be created after identifying the operational requirements in terms of capacity how much speed is required how much users have to connect it with the or how many users must be handled by using that ne network either over data is so much sensitive so we have to provide maximum security to over data and flexibility so we have to know the requirements of of over network network infrastructure design can help you to plan an it network more efficiently so advantages of network we can share the files so there is no need to transfer over files from one computer to another computer by using any source like by using the cds or usb we can directly send over file towards any computer towards uh, within the city or out of the city within the country out of the country we can share the resources like we have one or two printers that must be enough inside the whole office we are not uh, giving a separate printer to each 
staff member communication all the persons can communicate with each other even they are sitting inside the office or they are sitting outside the office convenience in that data is accessible through an internet connection so we can say that the data will be similar uh, similar for every person and they can access the data by sitting at home or by sitting inside the office cost like we have uh, the network reduce the cost like one or two printers are enough for the whole staff we don't need to purchase the extra hardware devices to facilitate over staff storage we are sharing the storage of our server so we can say that that provides us the storage so we can save the copies of our files on the server so if uh, there is any fault inside our system we can access that file from the server now we have to discuss the peripheral devices the common peripheral devices are mouse keyboard monitor ram dvd rom microphone webcam printer we have to discuss the functionality of these devices so we can suggest how many devices must be used either we have to use the ram either we have to use the webcam microphone which type of peripheral devices we need inside over infinity car categories of peripheral devices the categories of peripheral devices are input devices output devices input output and storage devices like io devices that can act both as input and the output device these categories are based on the direction of flow like we are sending data to the computer or we are receiving data from the computer if we are sending data to the computer so we are saying that that is input device and if our device is receiving the data that is output device now how the these devices can work keyboard working we have multiple keys when we press a key it presses a switch that is uh, available a circuit is available uh, between each key so that will complete the circuit and the mechanical action of the switch causes some vibration called the bounce which uh, the processor filters out and each uh, has its own code each key has its own code that code will be converted into the binary language and then the processor filters out which key is pressed by using the keyboard if you press and hold a key the processor recognizes it is a equivalent of pressing a key rapidly so by uh, judging the vibration they can judge which key is pressed by the keyboard the processor can judge so how does a mouse work an optical mouse has a bright light down on to the disc far uh, from the led that have uh, the transmit the signal towards the screen the light bounces straight back uh, straight up off the desk into the photo cell uh, as the photo cells are available on the screen and uh, uh, the short distance from the led so uh, that's why we are using uh, whenever we are using the bluetooth mouse that has smaller range or that can be used within the room so the photo cell has a lens in front of it that magnifies the reflected light so the mouse can respond more precisely to your hand movement so each lens will, uh, will identify at where we are moving over point so that will move the pointer according to the movement of our, of our mouse the microphone microphone is a device that translates sound vibrations in the air into the electric signals and subscribe them to the recording medium or over a loudspeaker so as we are speaking the over uh, microphone will record the voice and then convert into the electronic signals like in zero and one when all the data uh, will be manipulated then it will send that electric signals towards the speaker and at the speaker end they will convert that electric signals again into the voice signal microphone has a circuit inside that is responsible to convert the voice into electrical or digital signals microphone enable many types of audio recording devices for purposes including communication of many kinds as well as the music vocal speech and sound recording so we can use a microphone or we can use any other device scanners convert the image the scanner has uh, a lens inside it and it will capture the image of our document and then that image will be 
transferred inside the computer whenever we want to make any changes on that image we have to install a software that is known as ocr software that will uh, recognize that optical character and convert that optical characters into text this process is done by scanning head which uses one or more sensors to capture the image as light or electrical charges so working these are the input devices now output devices monitors like an lcd monitor is composed of two specially treated plates of polarized glass like we have two glass and there is a liquid crystal in between these two glass and that is uh, transparent and when the electricity pass to that uh, transparent uh, liquid crystal that will became opaque and they will not uh, transmit the light uh, from it and different wavelengths of light uh, uh, follow uh, flow on it follow on on the crystals and by measuring the wavelength of the light Uh, different type of colors can be displayed on the crystals so different display colors and different uh, can be displayed on different points so different types of printers are available so that is the responsibility of printer to convert the digital data into the on to the paper so all the digital characters will be transferred towards the paper so they do this by using a driver or specialized software the software has the instruction and giving that instructions towards the printer and printer will understand how to convert the file into the language that the printer can understand the image or text is then recreated on the page using the different technique like by using the user light uh, laser light or by spraying ink on the paper or we can burn the ink on the paper so different types of printers are available now speaker the electromagnetic waves are converted into the sound waves through the speakers as i told you whenever we are giving the voice towards the computer the computer will convert or the microphone will convert that voice into electric signal and then after manipulation the uh, uh, speaker will receive the uh, digital signals and that uh the circuit available inside the speaker will convert that digital signals into the sound waves the storage devices primary storage generally they are smaller in size primary storage devices are designed to hold data temporarily and they have fastest data access speeds there are two types of me memories ram and cache memory also rom is also type of main memory secondary storage as we have discussed the secondary storage has the larger capacity and they can store the data permanently they can be internal or external internal devices include hard disk and the external include usb storage cds dvds hard disk store operating system software program and other uh, files by using the magnetic disk so magnetically we are storing data inside the hard disk and hard disk driver is uh, responsible to read the data from the hard disk and write the data towards the hard disk on optical disk we are using the laser technology to store the data and also the laser beams are responsible to read that data from the optical disk so cds and dvds are the examples of optical storage medium flash drives that have the electrical signals and the electrically we are storing the data so that are ultra portable we can easily move that uh, over files from one place to another flash drives connects to the computers and other devices via usb ports that are available almost in every computer multiple usb ports are available flash drives are often referred as a pen drive thumb drive or jump drive because of their size these days the usb can hold up to 2 terabytes of storage memory cards like in our phones we are using the memory cards in laptops we are using the memory card a memory card is an electronic data storage device used for storing digital information typically using the flash memory these are commonly used in portable electronic devices such as digital cameras mobile phone laptops tablets if we want to add additional memory inside that we have to use the memory cards so the, these were the peripheral devices 
after knowing the working of peripheral devices we have to suggest in assignment which peripheral devices is suitable for the infinity cars or which type of peripheral devices they must have to use like they have to use the memory card they have to use the hard disk they have to use the printer etc each and everything will be explain explained inside your assignment in activity number 2 we have to explain different types of operating system then we have to tell which type of software applications are available and which software application is most suitable to our client and then we have to tell what uh, what is web application and what is mobile application and what are the advantages of these application which web application must be used by our customer and which mobile application must be used by our customer and how they can enhance the experience so different types of operating systems are available the first one is general purpose that can be used on personal computers that are the general purpose operating system that uh, uh, represents a array of operating system instead uh, to run a multitude of application on a bo uh, broad selection of hardware enabling a user to run one or more application are task simultaneously user have to decide which application must be run that's why we are using these on over personal computers a general purpose operating system can be installed on many different desktops and laptop models and run applications from accounting system to the database system so general purpose operating system typically focus on the process like if we are opening any application then a process will be generated operating system itself is not doing anything it totally depends on the user if user is working on single process the operating system will work according to that if the user is working on 10 processes at the same time the operating system will manage that 10 processes mobile operating system that is responsible to manage the resources of over mobile phones and the operating system that installed inside over desktop computer is different from over mobile operating system as over mobile has the limited resources limited uh, display so uh, limited input and output devices so we have to use the operating system according to our resources so the operating system that are installed like android apple uh, uh, operating system ios operating system blackberry operating system that are the examples of over mobile operating system so mobile operating systems are designed to accommodate the unique needs of mobile computing and communication centric devices such as smartphones and tablets Mobile devices typically offer limited computing resources compared to the traditional PCs, and the operating system must be scaled back in size and complexity in order to minimize its own resource use. So we have to manage over all resources. Mobile operating system tend to emphasize efficient performance, user responsiveness, and close attention to the data handling tasks such as porting media and streaming. So that is single uh, user based. device so and have limited resources so so we have to use operating system accordingly embedded operating system that is installed in different machines like atms point of sales so according to that machines that operating system has their own rule of use our own principle to use like atms are only used for the transactions and the cash withdrawals point of sales are only used to uh, make the billings and different uh, to re, um, uh, add the barcodes in the bill so that are used on different type of devices and each device has own purpose the operating system should run quickly no crash and handle all the errors gracefully in order to continue operating in all the circumstances because we have to use atms 24 by 7 point of sales are also used 24 by 7 so we have to manage the operating system that can be error free a medical device used in patient's life support equipment for example will employ an embedded operating system that run reliably in the order to keep the patients alive so the machines that are responsible for uh, making the heartbeat and other things towards the patient is also Uh, based on embedded operating system 
network operating system that provide the facility how we can communicate between the devices so like by using the lan the network operating system provides the communication stack needed to understand the network protocols like how file is sended how we can encode the file how we can decode the file how we can break that file into the packets and then send that on the uh, wires so today the concept of specialized network operating system is largely obsolete because other operating system types largely handle the network communication like all type of net, uh, operating system is providing the networking feature like in windows 10 and windows server 2019 for example, include comprehensive network capabilities. The concept of network operating system is still used for some networking devices such as routers, switches, and firewalls. So the devices that are responsible are that are used to make over network are using the network operating system. Real-time operating system that are used in specialized field like in industrial place we have to use real time operating system that respond according to some specific um, uh, activity to trigger like if over uh, temperature is high uh, or greater than 20 or 30 or 240 we have to set the point that will start alarming or also uh, such uh, for example an industrial control system may direct the operations of power plant such a facility will produce signals from the numerous sensors and also send signals to operate regulators motors and countless other devices like alarm system motors in these situations the industrial control system must respond quickly and predictably like if the, the uh, temperature is high we have to despawn quickly otherwise disaster may result and real-time operating system must function without buffering processing latencies and other delays so there is no weight inside that operating system which are preferably acceptable in other type of operating system now different software applications the categories of software applications are word processor database software multimedia software web browsers so we have to suggest which category suits over user either they have to use word processor they have to use database software they have to use the multimedia software or they have to use the web browsers word processor are used to make the documentations if we want to generate a document and we have to print that document we have to use word processor examples are ms word apple i work pages coral work perfect and google doc database software it is used to maintain over data as we are in over uh, car company we are switching from registers to data we can use the database software to manage over data we can use any of them ms access file maker dbase clipper mysql fox pro or we can use microsoft excel if we want to store over data so we ha you have to judge which software is better to record the uh, entities of our data multimedia software this is a software which is able to play create as well as record images these software are utilized for animation video editing graphics as well as for the image editing different companies are using the multimedia softwares for the advertisement if they want any advertisement in graphics form they want to uh, generate a um, uh, commercial for their organization they have to use the multimedia software for example they can use the adobe photoshop picasa vlc media player windows media player windows movie maker web browser that are used to search something from the internet or either we have to uh, open any website we have to use the web browser so different web browsers are available like google chrome mozilla firefox internet explorer opera uc browser safari so we have to suggest which application software or which software suits over customer now web applications a web application is an application program that is stored on the remote server like if we are storing over data on any database service we have to link that database to words over website and whenever we have to maintain over website we have to install a web application on over server so web application can be designed for a wide variety of uses and can be used by anyone from the an organization to an individual for numerous reasons. Like if we want 
to uh, if any administrative person wants to access the web application their pages are different their web pages are different as compared to when any user is seeing the web application commonly used web applications include web mail online calculators e-commerce shops what is web browser web browser as we have discussed that is responsible to um translate which uh, website move towards so we can say that that can understand the web address and then uh, se um, uh, send that uh, um, uh, address towards the server and the server will uh, resp uh, give response and all the contacts uh, available on that website will be displayed by that web servers so browsers are primarily used the world wide web they can also be used to access information provided by the web servers so what are the benefits how the user can enhance their experience by using the web application so we can say that web application have many different uses and with those uses comes many potential benefits like we can say that they allow multiple users access the same version of an application like multiple person are using different websites for shopping different brands are giving the uh, web application as well as the mobile application for the online shopping web apps don't need to be installed only we are going towards the like we can uh, only have uh, if we have uh, installed the web browsers we only give the address of the website and uh, the website will be displayed in front of the user the user don't need to install anything on the computer web apps can be accessed through the various platforms by using desktops laptops or mobiles can be accessed through the multiple browsers there is no compulsion which browser must be used for access of over web application so after the installation and uh, uh, first thing is that we have to manage over data then we have to install the network inside our system then we have to suggest which peripheral devices must be used which type of operating system must be used then we have to move towards the web application how we can uh, maintain our website and why we have to make a website for the infinity cars so we have to suggest the user how the users can be facilitated by using the web applications or websites now mobile applications when we have designed the web application the next step is that we have to maintain a mobile application each and every company has its website as well as its app on the play store as well as on the apple store so every person is also using the mobile application so a mobile application most commonly named as a app that is type of application software that must be done on the mobile phone mobile application frequently serve to provide user with the similar services to those accessed on the pcs like same services will be available on the website and the same services are available on the mobile phones but they are handy a mobile phones are handy and every person is using the mobile phones that's why we are also using the mobile application along with the websites so these are the benefits mobile applications are very faster than the mobile websites even a well groomed and optimized responsive mobile website cannot match with the speed of an app so we can say that the apps are more fa uh, faster than the websites the mobile app offers customization provision for the users like we can create our accounts and we can uh, save over data we can log in, in the web application uh, mobile application this helps the e-commerce market to reach the right customer with the right product so by seeing the history of the customer the uh, website or the e-commerce person can suggest different page, uh, products to the specific customer one of the exciting advantage of mobile app is it can be accessed offline there is no need of internet in some applications they can be accessed by uh, without internet it opens a great opportunity to engage with the user's productivity for example apps can ask permission to access the camera location service payment gateways to ease out the service so we are providing the services to our customers instead uh, like there is no need to pay the cash they can 
diff uh, use different payment methods to purchase anything. Instant update and notification is one of the most exciting reasons. There is no need to visit the website time to time. All the notification will be given towards uh, by using the mobile applications. An app ser serves as a brand ambassador for the company. It is the ultimate possibilities, unlimited possibility to engage customers in different dimensions. So, the customer can access each product by sitting at home. Mobile apps are a great way to reduce the cost with a short productivity as app can connect the vendors and customer through a single direct channel. There is no extra thing must be installed or there is no extra thing must be used like each and every person is using the mobile phone. So it reduces the extra marketing expenses. There is no need to send flyers to our uh, homes are making advertisement uh, published on the roads and different other areas mobile apps are the best solution to give such a verifying shopping experience right from their comfort with the exclusive user interface mobile apps can leverage its great potentials to engage users in multiple ways so that's why each and every person is using the mobile apps as well as the web application so we ha you have to convince the user and tell how they can get more customers when they are switching towards the computer and they are switching towards the web applications and the mobile application is there any confusion no ma'am okay then take care have a nice day allah hafiz